Welcome back to a new episode. And in this one, we're leaving this pale blue dot and looking at something that is literally out of this world. Today, we're looking at the tardigrade from Hukiko. Now, what is tardigrade from Hukiko? The tardigrade is a concept of what a NASA motorcycle could potentially look like. So this motorcycle has a top speed of nine miles an hour, 70 miles of range, of course, it's electric, weighs in at a hefty 134 kilos, and you can take this baby apart in under two minutes, which makes it absolutely perfect for a lunar mission. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video over this amazing design is because for those of you who don't know, I've spent more than over the last year working on the design of the first two cars that are gonna race on the lunar surface. And so I feel like I can add a little bit to the equation, a little bit to the information that we're looking at in terms of what's required to start this new age of mobility on the lunar surface. Now, during the design and engineering phase of the tardigrade motorcycle, they've obviously taken into account lightweight. You can see that overall on the design. But the fact is that weight is always the enemy, and especially when you're going to the moon, because one kilo will cost you around a million euros to get it up there. So they're looking at lightweight and very, very strong construction. So there's a lot of engineering in the way the frame has been designed. Also, what's critical on the moon is gonna be traction. So the wheels are not the type of wheels that we would use on Earth. There's no air, obviously, in the, in the wheels here, in the tires. This is more of a carbon construction that offers you a sort of general traction, not type of paddles like we see on beaches or things like that, but something that is more all round. So it can grip on rock or hard uh, surfaces, on softer surfaces. So it'll be pretty versatile in that sense, the wheels are flat in profile, they're not rounded underneath, so you'll be able to still maneuver around, but it'd be more like driving rather than riding. From an aesthetic point of view, what I really like about this is what we would call trellis design. This is something that Ducati is very well known for in the motorcycle industry. It's a frame design that is exposed, and the frame itself and the engine or the motor is basically part of the overall structure of the vehicle. So you can really see how they're not really covering anything on the bike, on the framework here. It is what it is. And in that sense, the framework is the look of the bike. I think it works very well. It's very technical. And it looks like it has a bit of storage where you can put all your uh, things that you collect on the ride inside. You might want on something like this to have additional storage because you never know what you're gonna find when you go out there and you're gonna want as much capability of storage as possible on something like this. The actual motorization of this has to be electric. There are not many petrol stations on the moon, so you wanna be careful that you have enough battery power to keep this thing going for those 70 miles plus round trip. The other thing is the lighting elements on the motorcycle here. I'm sure it's equipped with headlights, probably even with a tail light, and the projection of the lighting, how wide do you spread the beam? You're gonna be running in very unknown territory, so lighting is quite critical. And then also, I think another important factor is going to be the steering. And it looks like they're using electric or hydraulic steering, which means no direct linkage of the handlebars to the wheels. So that's gonna be a lot easier to steer than if you're actually having to turn physically a handlebar connected to the front wheel. A very well thought out system to maneuver on the surface of the moon. This is something that I could perfectly imagine being actually feasible, and why not? I mean, if you're a motorcycle fanatic and you're going up to the moon, that would be the ultimate off-road adventure, I think, for any motorcycle fanatic. I would love to do something like that. The interesting thing with a concept like this is there is no single one answer as to what the optimal design for a motorcycle is for the moon. I can tell you that the vehicles that will be racing on the moon, the four-wheeled vehicles, they're not like anything you would see on Earth, radio controlled or whatever. They are absolutely very unique looking, purpose-driven, and that's all you have to do with a vehicle like this is to make it 
purpose designed and that will tell you or give you the answer as to what it's gonna look like. You have to get the mission done, you have to go out, do what's needed to be done and come back fairly quickly, reliably of course, semi-comfortably, but safe. And that is the most important requirement in the design of anything like this. Another aspect I'd like to touch on is the modularity of this vehicle. In other words, the ability to attach things to it that add convenience or, or necessity even. If you're going from the base to another site and you need to transport a drill, you need to transport some type of equipment, it would be great if you could have some type of hitch on the back with a little cart or some type of loading device that allows you to transport even more equipment, perhaps even other people. The addition even next to it of a sidecar, carry passengers or, or other equipment with you, that would be a great addition to have. Another additional factor that could really help this vehicle is for example, if you just happen to find yourself, let's say at the bottom of a crater, steep crater, and you're trying to get out, you're going up very steep walls, you've got 134 kilos, <laughs> To get up there and you're only traveling nine miles an hour, that's quite a task. And I think you're probably going to need some additional power, some additional torque, some extra boost, whatever, to actually help you get up that side of the crater. Now here's the thing, if you're a budding designer out there, or even a professional designer, I think the benefit or actually the merit to society of designing something like this is a lot more important than designing the next best super hypercar or whatever. This is really bringing something to the game that has never existed before. So I would suggest even if it's just an exercise for every designer to challenge themselves with this new dimension. And there you have it, truly an episode dedicated to something out of this world. So again, let me know your thoughts below. Let me know what you think could be solutions to any type of outer space design and development. It can be anything related to that. Let me know what your Behance address is. I'll check into it. Anything with a lot of votes, I will definitely be checking out. And again, thanks for watching. I'll look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you.